Guess who's back? Back again. <laughs> really? It's Ibex. Hi. <laughs> Ibex, where are we right now? We are in the Holy Cross Wilderness in Colorado. It's very pretty. Why the heck are you in Colorado? You're supposed to be on the PCT. Why am I here right now? What am I doing with my life? I don't know. Um, okay, so we were going southbound on the PCT. Everything was great. And then we get to California and all of California is on fire. So we were in Northern California. A lot of it was already closed down from fire closures. We were trying to do the little bit in the middle that was open. It was really smoky. And then that ended up closing down. So we like skipped ahead all of Northern California basically into the Sierra which was like amazing. Clear skies, like perfect weather, no crowds, no bugs. It was really, really nice. And then every national forest in California closed down and they were like, you need to get out. And we saw a ranger and we asked them all about it. And they were like, you can go on to the next like bailout point and then you have to leave. And they're like tentatively closed until September 17th, but apparently this happened last year as well. And they didn't reopen until like it rained or until winter came which is what the ranger said they'd probably do again this year. So it looks like California is pretty much shut down until winter. And that means our through hike's over. That's so sad. I'm so sorry. It's really sad. And, um, like, guys, obviously we know that there are worse consequences of this fire to ecosystems, communities, people losing their lives and homes and all of that. But that doesn't mean that this isn't also sad. I know. Yeah, I really feel for the people who live there because even the people who aren't in the immediate range of fire or whose houses aren't, like, right about to burn down or anything like that, they're still dealing with smoke. Like, we had to go through South Lake Tahoe and the AQI, which is, like, the air quality index, was between three and 500 when we were there. Everything just looked like it was in a dense fog. There was ash raining from the sky. And, like, the day after we got through there, we heard that it had been evacuated. So, like... The people who live there are really suffering with, like, air quality and having to be evacuated and, like, where do they go? I don't know. It's just, like, and this is getting, from everyone we've spoken to in California, this is getting to be more and more normal every year. I mean, wildfires are a natural part of the ecosystem, but these, like, really big mega fires are not normal and are not okay. And um, they're kind of, like, last year and this year were, like, record-breaking here for fires and it seems like it's just getting worse and worse so apparently southbound not a great way to go on the pct anymore because you're in california during fire season so yeah dude that's crazy <laughs> so denver had the worst air quality in the world maybe like a month ago and the aqi was maybe close to 200 so i can't freaking imagine 300 to 500 and i actually looked at at this index recently to see what the scale is and i think that 500 is like the worst like the top of the so scale that's what we thought but then we heard about other towns in california that were up to 2000 i don't even really? yeah i don't understand scale i looked at only it goes to, to i know that i don't know this was like people from california telling us this so i don't know what it means i don't know if they've had to amend it because of how bad the smoke has gotten in places i'm not sure yeah but. that's just freaking nuts um, yeah and, and we have even in colorado on some days had like a bunch of haziness here and like pretty bad smoke like from those california fires yeah and like last summer we had a really bad fire season and california had a really bad fire season so like you couldn't escape the smoke so i definitely worry about our planet moving forward mm -hmm. yeah this whole the whole hike has made me very concerned <laughs> for the planet yeah. <laughs> oh gosh and i'm so sorry for you guys and like everyone had to get off because yeah. i mean while there are obviously like again, bigger consequences and problems from these fires. Like people save up for years to do these hikes and mm -hmm. like, you know, people weren't able to do it last year because of COVID and people quit yeah. their jobs and give up their apartments and take all of these actions in order to be able to go on this big adventure that they planned for years. So just having to get off, like you didn't even make it halfway. No, we only did about 1,100 miles. So I was like feeling just getting into the groove of things and like really feeling good and ready to move on and ready to hit 2,000 and all that. And yeah. And for us, especially for a boy band and I and my boyfriend, it's been like really devastating because we did like leave our lives and our jobs last year to hike and then COVID happened and we couldn't hike last year. And now to have this happen this year, it feels like the PCT is like derailing my life. Cause I'm like, I'm still like, well, I still want to hike the whole thing. Now I have to like take more time off and do another year. 
I don't know what I'm doing. I keep telling her it's because <sighs> she's attempting to hike it without me. Apparently. I know. Next time I have to do it with her, I guess. Because, guys, if you missed Ibex's first interview, she and I did the AT together. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, it was successful. So it makes sense that she would just do the PCT with me. But she keeps trying to do it in a year that I can't do it. So, obviously, she's been cursed. And now she was all like down to potentially do it in 2022. And now she's like pushed it off again and doesn't want to do it until 2023. And I just don't know if I can wait that long. I just But maybe don't. I have to. I think I have to take a break from that. Trail. I don't, I just don't think it's a good idea. Like COVID numbers are going up again. Mm -hmm. I mean, these wildfires, who knows what the devastation along the trail, who knows yeah, what that's going to look some like. Some of those closures from this year are definitely still going to be closed next year. And so. that's hundreds of miles. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I personally just can't justify like leaving my job and my life at a time when I'm not certain. You know what I mean? Like, but when are you ever going to be certain? Well, you never can be now. like truly, truly certain, of course. Yeah. But it just seems like there are too many red flags next year, at least for me. Yeah. Um, <sighs> okay. See. So of the 1100 miles that mm -hmm. you were on the PCT, so you started up in Washington at the mm -hmm. Canadian border. Mm -hmm. Um, which part was your favorite? What did you like the best? Oh my gosh. I mean, obviously Washington. It was awesome. It was so hard and so scary at first. Like none of us have great snow experience and there was they had like a super high snow year. So when and we you got guys started there, early. We started early. We started mid June. So when we got there, like the whole trail was snow covered. <laughs> and it was really intense. And we ended up to get from Hearts Pass to the bo the Canadian border. We ended up having to do some lower alternates just to avoid some of the snow, but those were like hadn't been maintained since 2019 and were like littered with blowdowns. And it was just to come out not being in through hiker shape and hike that and be climbing over trees all day long and then going up over snowy passes as well. Like it was super hard, but it was that's the part I like think of the most. It really sticks in my memory. Like it was so gorgeous. There was nobody else out there because everyone else who did do early start dates were like, mm, nope. <laughs> and the couple people who had come out like checked it out and were like, nope. And they were just like waiting in town. They were like, we're gonna just like wait a couple of weeks for snow to melt. And we were like, I was like, I can't sit around and do that. We have to at least try. So yeah, we did it and like it was just so it just felt like such an adventure. Like we were the only people out there. It was totally wild. The snow was crazy. And we got like better and better and more and more comfortable with it. Like from Hearts Pass South, we followed the whole actual PCT. We didn't do like any lower alternates. And there was still tons of snow. And uh, we all fell and our ice axes like <laughs> didn't come in handy at that particular fall. <laughs> but like- Sounds we, exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was very exciting. It was very scary, but like we made it. And then like the rivers were all filled with snow melt and like were raging. So there was a lot of like sketchy fording, but it was just so gorgeous. Like Washington, any time of year is gorgeous. But at that time of year, like the weather was amazing. It was like clear blue skies and totally sunny every day. But you had all these like snow covered peaks and just like beautiful vistas and oh uh, I, I definitely look forward to exploring more of Washington when I finally get on the PCT yeah I just want to like re-hike Washington again at some point uh, well you'll be able to when you go back oh yeah when I go back and do it northbound <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, exactly, right 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 exactly uh. um by the way did you notice that our outfits totally match for this interview again as well? yeah we have the micro puff the melly the yep. rain pants yep. I should have worn my beanie <laughs> nice one yeah. Oh, yeah, you should have. Oh, well. <laughs> um, let's see. So can you compare? I mean, I know you. there's a lot more trail to go, but can you compare? What did you think of the PCT versus the AT? Like, how, what are the differences? Mm. How are they similar? They're so opposite. I can't even begin. Like, first of <laughs> all, we got rain on the PCT maybe three times and each time it was so light that it was kind of like oh this is nice and refreshing <laughs> like it rained on the AT pretty much every third every, day on average at least, every, at least. I, 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 yeah I counted it up so on average um 
Yeah, so there's no rain, which is also a problem. You could go for some rain out there, honestly. It's so dry. It's so, like, dusty in a lot of places. It's, like, a different kind of filth that you get. You don't get, like, the muddy and then, like, from the humidity out on the AT, like, that kind of sticky, sweaty feeling. But mm -hmm. you do get just covered in this, like, micro dust, like, oh. all over you. And it, like, seeps into all your clothing and all your gear. Um... It's obviously like the AT is more green tunnel, but then you do get views, but it's a lot more through the woods. And the PCT, I feel like it's more through the woods than people make it out to be. Um, there's a lot of woodland parts too, which is really nice. Uh, but there's obviously these huge grand open vistas where you can see the trail in front of you for miles and stuff like that, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> and what else? Oh, so yeah, oh. The big thing really, like physically on that trail, so the AT is so much harder than the PCT. <laughs> like the, the AT is so hard. <laughs> Once we got past like the blowdowns and the snow had melted and stuff like that, we were actually on trail. I was like, is this for real? Am I going uphill right now? I wouldn't have even known. Like they do all the switchbacks and it's like graded for animal use. Like you can ride horses on it. So it's like really chill until you get to the Sierra. Then there's finally some more steep stuff. But, like, overall, the trail is way more chill than the AT and physically, like, way less abusive than the AT. Like, That's my, nice. Yeah, that is, like, the nicest thing about it. Like, my knees on the AT on, like, day three started hurting and, like, never stopped hurting. My feet lost sensation and were all tingly and, like, messed up on the AT. That did not happen at all on the BCT. I've had like no physical issues and that's still like we've still done over a thousand miles and the only thing I get is like after you know 20 or so miles hiking along like my legs start feeling achy inside mm -hmm. of my hips a little bit but like it's all recovered by the next morning it's no big deal. That's crazy because you were doing bigger miles on the PCT right? Yeah so that's the thing again like AT for us like an average was between 15 and 20 generally and like we could do 20 and over but I really it hated sucked. doing it. It, it terrible. sucked so much. <laughs> Whereas on the PCT, we were averaging 25, like, easily. I still didn't hit 30, though. Like, a lot of people, especially when you get to Oregon, hit and do 30s and even 40s. But that, to me, is still, like, doing 20-plus on the AT. Like, I still, like, yeah. I could do it, but I don't want to. It's not fun for me. But so. also, isn't that people generally are doing that when they're going northbound? So they've done more yeah, miles. Yeah, yeah. But we met, I mean, southbounders do, too. I feel like a lot of people who go choose to go southbound on the PCT are, like, more in shape and more kind of, like, into doing the big miles as well like a, yeah. we had a lot of bros that, that was definitely. like that was like on the AT too <laughs> like the southbounders were bros yeah yeah <laughs> but on the PCT I feel like the northbounders were bros too maybe it was just like by the time we were meeting them all but like they all had teeny tiny backpacks were carrying like nothing they all just cowboy camped every single night which we tried doing that once and it was awful <laughs> I don't like it because of the bugs that night but then like if there's not the bugs it's because it's really cold and I don't know if I want to do that either <laughs> and I, whatever I'm just not a cowboy camping person I guess but they were all just like savages and yeah we're doing like 30s minimum like every day <laughs> um okay so pct is over for this year yeah so what now i mean i don't know <laughs> i'm here it took that for me to finally come to colorado and visit glow stick i lived here for over two and a half years <laughs> she kept saying she's gonna visit never did never did <sighs> finally she yeah. bought her plane ticket on wednesday flew in thursday <laughs> yeah literally the day before was like okay i guess i'm going to colorado for now yeah we so went to, her um, and her boyfriend are here for a week visiting so we're out backpacking right now of course yeah. what else would we be doing what else would we be doing yeah we went to um a la first in california to visit my brother and then yeah we flew from there out here we're doing this for a week and then um we have a wedding at the end of september so we'll hang out for the last week of september and then do that wedding that's in new york back that's home. in new york yeah and then we i think are gonna do a hike during october i'm not sure which yet but possibly something out east down south somewhere where it rains and i don't have to think about fires <laughs> but not the at not the at but maybe it touches the AT a little bit. Okay. We shall All see. right. Well, let us know in the comments if you guys can guess what trail she's talking about. <laughs> Let's just say that it involves some steep Georgia mountains that I will be really curious to, to hear what you think of those. Because on the AT, 
I thought Georgia was just so freaking hard. It was so up, down, hard. up, down, up, down. Yeah. But I don't, now I've had a lot more hiking experience, obviously, and so have you. Mm -hmm. So I'll be curious to hear. Do you still think Georgia is as hard as we did back then? I have a feeling I'm still going to think it's really hard. <laughs> I think so, too, but we'll <laughs> but, see. <laughs> yeah, it's just not going to be what I'm used to with those gradual PCT climbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if people want to follow these future mystery adventures, mm -hmm. where can they do that? Uh, my Instagram is spaced outside. And then my other Instagram, where I put pictures of, like, mushrooms and plants and cool things like that along the trails, is microgasm. Nice. And I'll, <laughs> I'll put those in the show notes, guys, for easy access. Mm. Um, is there anything else you want to say about this, like, mi mini PCT adventure uh, or future adventures or... Um, I doing a second through hike, like I didn't know how I would feel about oh, it. Oh yeah, comparison. I wanted to ask that. Yeah, how it yeah, how like, it compared to the first one, and I, I feel like I loved it so much again, which is great. I wasn't sure if I'd be like, oh, this is like on repeat. I'm doing the same thing again, but because the PCT is so different, it still felt like a totally new adventure. And because I was going with boy band, who this was his first, like he's done the long trail with me and other shorter long trails, but this is his first like long distance through hike. I got to. To kind of see him like get into the hiker trash lifestyle and just like fall in love with the trail and like see it through his eyes for the first time so it was like that made it really cool as well um so yeah I don't know I think it just kind of further cemented that I'm really hooked on through hiking and that that's I'm just awesome. gonna love it every time <laughs> but it wasn't as magical as the AT I will say that the How AT could it is be? still like How my first love you know <laughs> that's really good to hear though because yeah. I feel like a lot of people do you know end up quitting their second through hike or saying they don't like it nearly as much but I, I feel like some of those people go like one year after the other and I feel like it would be so hard in that scenario not to compare but yeah I mean I'm definitely looking forward to my next through hike whenever that may be so it's good to hear that it was still like an amazing experience yeah and I did try to keep that mindset of not really comparing it like obviously I'm gonna compare it to the AT because that's my other through hike but not comparing it in the sense of like how it made me feel or anything just comparing it in like the facts like oh the AT was really steep and this is like this or the AT is really wet and this is dry you know like little ways like that but not trying to compare it like emotionally I guess <laughs> yeah yeah that makes yeah. sense yeah so all right cool well thanks for being back on the <laughs> channel everyone Go follow Ibex to find out what her net her next adventures are. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you got some value or entertainment or whatever out of this or you just want to be nice. <laughs> and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.